All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Origairu, Season, Season 3, three episode, episode 5. Wish the tears hadn't stopped. Yep. Yeah. Me too, Yui. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm -hmm. But now that this has happened... That's happened, yeah. What are you going to do mm -hmm. about it? Well, if anything, I think she's going to try and be there for Yukino. Like, <sighs> as much as possible. Yeah. Or, or at the very yeah. least, try and just recover... And then mm -hmm. kind of be available for when, you know, uh, maybe things escalate a little bit. Because there's a possibility that Hachiman gets kind of pushed away from this. Like, like this is something where he's ultimately kind of caught in the rock in a hard place situation where mm -hmm. he could be getting, you know, wanting to do something that is actually not needed at this point. Uh -huh. But also is based on something that she said at a different point in her life. But the fact that he's going to see Hiratsuka Sensei mm -hmm. makes this really <laughs> exciting. Yes, I we mean can, we can ah. rest assured that uh, any any potential blind sides that Hachiman has will be addressed and pointed out, and and that you and know then he'll be at least aware once he makes the choice. Right, and he'll be yeah. able to be at his best. <gasps> Just Hiratsuka Sensei, Hiratsuka you're Sensei a legend. Is, he's truly wonderful. Let's just jump right into it. All right, everyone. Now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below. Then come back here for the discussion. <laughs> I love this wow. show. Wow. I love this that, show so uh, much. That oh, episode I, is real I, good. I, I love it. I, it's, oh man, oh. It's, it's one of those things where the... The characters are so well realized. The characters are so yeah, well realized that, that even... Oh. Even more than that, because like, okay, characters being well realized, right? Yeah. That's that's one thing. And and right. while it's and while it's rare to get from stories, it happens, right? Mm -hmm. And it's and it's wonderful when yeah. it happens and, and each story does yeah, it differently totally. and, and things like that. But I think I think what blows me away the most about this series, just mm -hmm. from like a technical standpoint that it exists, is that the conflicts of the characters on an emotional and growth level mm -hmm. is so so interwoven and tangled up with the technical conflict right the oh technical conflict like the prom happening yeah the prom happening and things like that right it's okay. always it's always something where the service club is is addressing some issue right, right. and and the idea of a prom happening, it's like, okay, that's yeah, cool and all, right? But I, I get what you're saying. It's it's just one of those things where the ar the prom was kind of arbitrarily just brought up out of nowhere as a weapon that Iroha oh, was going to use. Yes, and that could have been anything. No, no, like, yes, it, no, no, right. Um, uh, not with um, not with what the thing is, right? Because right. there there are a lot of there are a lot of stories that, that'll do that where it's like hey here's this thing and because it's this thing in particular it's thematically relevant to the growth of the characters and the things that they're doing yeah. and stuff mm -hmm. but as far as the um the maneuvering through the technical regular conflict of making this prom happen even though the fact that it's a prom is kind of arbitrary right sure is so closely connected to the characters and 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 all their 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 interactions with each other and and their growth and, and things like that it's just Ah, ah. Well, it's also yeah. really fascinating because then you can have episodes like this where you take absolutely zero time, really, in the plot to have your entire oh, sure. episode focus around two conversations, really. Yeah. There are the, 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 the little kind of glue, connective tissue conversations, which are kind of the Iroha, you know, uh, Hachiman little bits in between uh, right. talking with Hiratsuka and talking with Yukino. But uh, this was a very slow episode, if you think about it, from the... Like, in-universe time passing. In-universe time passing. This yeah. is basically, you know, half a day mm -hmm. passing. Most yep. of it in Hiratsuka's office, basically. Right. But we have Hachiman covering two very important bases here. One, he needs to know, by going into Hiratsuka's office there... What's the best way to go about this by gathering meta environmental data? Right. This is one of the things that Hachiman is astonishingly good at, and mm -hmm. yet he knows when he's out of his depth when it comes to this stuff here. So he goes to Hiratsuka mm -hmm. to talk about this. But she also made sure that he had this conversation by calling him, being like, Right. Let, let, let's, let's talk. Let's do this. Let's, yeah. it, was, it was a text or something like that. But anyway. That conversation happening is really powerful because we know that these two can talk on a very 
Matter Frank of fact, level? Frank level, yeah. where there's less subtext involved uh, than with something like Iroha or Yukine. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we get a very matter-of-fact discussion about the whole prom situation, and mm -hmm. we see that, okay, she's effectively giving him exposition, telling him this is the way things are with the way the other parties are dealing with the prom. You now, as the active main character, will go and, you know, act on that info. Okay. The info that she gives him, though, kind of doesn't necessarily point him exactly in the direction that he ends up taking this. Hmm. Like, yeah, Hachiman has really grown a lot here. Like, he doesn't just listen yeah. now. He basically finds the little key points where people add, like, extra emphasis onto something mm -hmm. that kind of reveals a little bit of who they are. And okay. yet that only seems to be in focus to the people that he's really kind of engaging in these serious, like, matter-of-fact kind of types of discussions. Sure. And we see a very cool switching of that in the Yukino conversation, where he's like, I need to figure out the best way to ask to you to if I can help mm -hmm. in a way that will kind of make you say yes, which is right. kind of his old way of doing things. Yeah, that's... Which is almost playing too much into the subtext and then he ends up tripping over his own words because she's like oh there's the flaw right there paladin there it is mm -hmm. and he's like ah well crap then fine here's my matter of fact blunt new style of communication i don't care what you're choosing here mm -hmm. i don't like the way it's going here so i'm going to choose to fight against it so right. that you as someone who hates losing yep well, I, and and, just, oh, it's so perfect! What it's I, so perfect. What I love about that is that, like, because at first when I when when he said that, I was like, well, wait a minute, you yeah. both you both having your own methods, mm -hmm. you've done that in the past, and sure. in fact that went horribly, right? Mm -hmm. Like that went that went incredibly badly. Mm -hmm. But that was because of the reasoning behind why you were doing the different methods and the communication about that, right? Mm. Whereas here, it's the no, no, no. I'm I'm straight up going to do this, right? Regardless of you, right? You know that I'm yeah. going to do it in a way that will make it so that it doesn't feel like you're relying on me. But I'm yes. going to be actively opposing you. Uh huh. But it's a way that I can still contribute to the matter at hand without taking away any of your agency. Yes. Cool and awesome. You know what's hilarious about this is I feel like this is almost like <laughs> this is almost like. The, the mangaka just kind of knowing how, um, like, a freaking freight train off rails certain character writing can be, where mm. you just absolutely rob all these other characters of their agency by the way that you write them. Sure, yeah. And it because, feels like yep. they're basically, like, almost poking a little bit of fun at that by having mm. this main character come in and being like, no, 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 see, their relationship with this character specifically actually inspires them by almost teasing that some agency might be taken right. and it's like oh oh you you you're you're approaching uh -huh. me and it's right. like that's flirting and i'm like oh yep. my god that's amazing and, and, and the poor iroha just sitting yep. there watching all this happen and he's <laughs> and hachiman i love that i love that it was the the thing of hachiman <laughs> being like hey can i talk to you kind of alone right you know, even though he didn't specifically well, he didn't say, say alone. alone. No, no, he but said, can I like, talk with you? Yeah. yeah, but it's like, you're already talking with me, so, you know, the, the thing is, okay, you want Irha to leave, and then Yukino's like, no, 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 Irha can stay here. Mm -hmm. Which I love, because it's something where Yukino's like, ah, no, 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 you're going to be talking about the, the prom and all that stuff, so she should stay here. And it's like, and, and Hachiman's in that situation where it's like, well... Yes, that is what I'm going to be talking about. Right. But there's also other things that I'm going to sort of be not talking about. Mm -hmm. Yukino, of course, is not aware, right? Because she doesn't know what he's going to say and things like that. So then she's like, oh, yeah, Iroha will stay here because, you know, it's about the prom and things like that. And probably because she also wants to make sure that it's kept kind of um, professional in a way. Yeah, can, you can, know? I, can I go in a bit deep on this line here? Oh, yeah? This is a part where Iroha very much was not comfortable. The second no. that the second yeah. that he said, I want to talk to you, Iroha's she is like, I'm going to go. Iroha understands enough about how much these mm -hmm. two kind of have a will-they-won't-they they dynamic yep. that she looked at this and went, shit, 
uh, there's maybe a 2% chance that this goes favorably for me. So I'm going to dip because not only do I have very little influence in how this conversation is going to go, mm -hmm. it would be wrong of me to try and move my influence into sure. this in any way. In addition to just being... And to witness happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there is a less of a chance of a 98% chance, but there is a high chance that this could end up in a very uncomfortable situation for me. Oh, yeah. Just by listening. Yep. And all of that is just in the, I I'm going to go. Now, what's crazy is that Yukino gets her to stay. And this is the part where I am surprised here. Oh. Is that Iroha, okay. I think, might have been like, if she really, like, really didn't want to be here. This is why I think that she thought there's a very, like, less of a chance of it getting uncomfortable than it was that she would have influence in the discussion. Because I think the reason why she stayed was because she's like, uh, it, it's not going to get that bad. Like, it's not... It's, sure, it's, I can handle I it. I can handle this. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm fine. I, it's right. going to be okay. And then as it went on, it was just a nightmare unfolding in front of her. Right, just the toad's like, like no, the water's not no, too warm. No, 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 fuck, no, yeah. shit, ah, right. God, why? Yep. You're just mm -hmm. practically saying, I love you, just confessing right. right here. And I'm basically not even here I am anymore. irrelevant. Yeah. And we know how much she hates right. that idea. Like, like that was... Ah. Like, Yukino's whole thing of, like, basically saying, like, hey, Iroha, stay here. Let's keep this professional, right? And then goes right into to basically flirting, you know, like like business flirting, you know, basically. Right. Now, it takes a while to build up to that, though. I oh, 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 no, no, totally. Yeah, that is not an up. immediate transition or yeah. anything like I that. Think, I think there's a second thing here at play. Mm -hmm. She had just discussed how their dynamic, or was it done later? Either way, they talk eventually about the idea that the dynamic that they have right now for how they've been planning this mm -hmm. is that I veto her suggestions. Right. And then she points out all the flaws in mine. Yep. Basically saying that they don't really work well together. So, so. Okay. So, based on that, there is a possibility that she's already kind of irrelevant in general in the planning of this whole thing and she's here just for the participation. So, uh Yukino might be ordering her I, in that respect. I, I will push back on that a bit. I think that that's that what that was is that was actually showing the place in which Yukino gets her best work done. Because oh, Iroha, she needs challenge from exactly. someone else. Iroha and Yukino okay. think yeah. so differently okay. that they're kind of perfectly suited to doing that with each other, right? Iroha does the things where she's like, all right, I'll veto that because that's a bit too crazy or whatever. And then Yukino's like, okay, well, you're not thinking about this when you put this plan forward, right? However, oh, so they basically are... Oh, that's interesting then. What basically that gives me a vibe of is that Iroha is the one actually getting most of her suggestions through. But uh, Yukino is sharpening them. Sure. Or, yeah. She's right. honing it's, them into actual usable suggestions. Right. They, they, both, they both basically have things to contribute, but it's something where... Um, mm -hmm. But it's a different... But it is very much a different dynamic than with Hachiman, whereas because... Right. Yeah, there's, there's. I feel like it's not that different necessarily. Well, okay, no, it, no, no. It actually, no, it really isn't that different. Yeah, it's more of, I guess, acknowledging the fact that they're similar enough, right? That it would cause problems if they were actually truly on the same side, mm -hmm. right? So it's okay. You yeah. go do your thing. I'll do my thing. Because in a lot of ways, this is one of the things that's maybe a bit rough, unfortunately, for Iroha, But she's mm -hmm. actually almost too similar to Hachiman for him to probably like. Oh, her. she's too similar. Well, all right. If you want to really? go on a limb, you could say that a lot of the characters are very similar. But the thing similar that's, issues all sort of thematically tied. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, Yukino is similar in a in a in a way that almost ties back more to their earlier selves, but in the ways that they've changed. Okay. I would actually say that they have a very few specific um, similar strengths, but I mean few. Okay. But actually personality-wise, if we go by Yukino at her like healthiest, uh -huh. and Hachiman at his healthiest, I don't think they're actually well, like, okay. Okay, that yeah. similar. Yeah, uh, you but, can. Uh, but Iroha and Hachiman both have this very, very observant, 
powerful connection to their environment and the ability to insert very specific little elements of chaos to move things around. Sure. In the crudest terms, they're both manipulative, but it's not that that's always the horrible thing. It's that they are able to understand and see the environment and uh, maneuver within it rather well. And I think Yukino is a lot Le- like like a lot of the opposite of that. She is way sure, more okay. of that kind of stand proud, yeah, stand tall, mm-hmm. walk with big strides, and accidentally bump into right, everything right. along Why the way. Why would the paladin try and use stealth? That seems like you know, <laughs> I have heavy armor. Yeah, I, who and, needs stealth when they can't hit you? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, but man, like this. But this this whole scene. This yeah. this whole scene was this whole scene absolutely oh fantastic, and yeah. and the. <sighs> I really just felt for Iroha so much. Like, yeah. like the 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 banter and stuff with Yukino and Hachiman was fantastic. I'm kind of I'm kind kind of holding my heart back for like the the when things go beyond the uh, the subtext play, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Because because yes, it was basically a confession, right? But it's not going to end there. And yeah. and the fact that that's what they have on the table and that. Yeah. It was basically also communicated through the stakes. And then, like, Yukino even repeated the stakes to be like, so this is what's on the table, uh-huh. right? We can we can get the other person to do any one thing we want, right? <laughs> and it's like, oh, boy. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Uh, what did you think about the bit where he says, I want to save you? And Iroha kind of, uh, and then uh, uh-huh. Yukino is like, thanks, you know. But it's mm-hmm. okay. Just hearing that is enough. I really like expected those exact words, but the tone and the yeah. face that she made with it, did it feel like she was either trying to maintain her emotions and thus seemed a little fake? Or it, Yeah, it did look like she was definitely like um putting up a front yeah, not necessarily yeah, yeah. in a bad way not necessarily a bad way but right. it felt like to me that she was hiding some really strong emotions in that well, moment well and, and here's the reason why I think she's kind putting of up Yui that front from like last episode style because you know? um, she really shouldn't have said that to Hachiman mm-hmm. back in season 2 gotcha of please save me That it that is an example of her weaker side Right, okay. the side that she wants gone right like so, we talked about in, in last episode's discussion right. yeah. so okay. the fact that Hachiman says that it is it means a lot that he says it because it shows where his heart is at. Yeah. But as far as the actual intent or not the intent behind it but the the idea of him doing that that is not something she wants right now. And mm-hmm. I think it's good that she doesn't. Yeah. Because yeah, I agree. Because otherwise nothing would change. Mm-hmm. So I think that's I, I I think that's why there was that like extra okay. layer. So Okay, so the reason why I'm adding on to this is because of the end credit scene where we get, or like that, not getting credit scene, is really just an end mm-hmm. scene or whatever. Yeah, after the credits. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was in credits? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, where she then puts the eye drops in. Uh-huh. I'm assuming just because she's not wearing her glasses right now. Which are basically a thing which I would say most people would use when you're looking at bright lights and stuff. So she was looking at her laptop for a long while. Yeah, I thought I thought she there was a point where she put her glasses on though. Like, no, like no, no, I'll show you. I'll show you. She uh, take she took them and was going to put them back on here. And then decides against it and just keeps typing. Gotcha. And I thought it was rather odd as like a. Don't you use these for reading slash... Right, yeah. Protect you know, your eyes and all that. Yeah, yeah. for... Catch you know, some like of a, the light. Like a, like a blue light thing, you know? Yeah. Um, but then, uh, later here, she's, you know, still, you know, going off here, typing stuff. You know, it is going to happen. It's a sure thing, yeah. Yep. And she's like, all right, you know. Cool, cool. Heading out. Lock when you leave. See you tomorrow. And she was whispering things, like, along the way there. Like, like, oh, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. But one of the things that she did as... Uh, Yukino or Iroha? Uh, Yukino. You mm-hmm. can see her pick up this little... Yeah, the eyedropper. The eyedropper here. Yeah. Which I assume she just does 
because I'm guessing it's a my eyes are being open for a lot of time, so I'm making sure that they don't dry out or something like that. You yeah, know, she's it, she's getting a lot of work it's, done. It's eye care basically, but it's <laughs> just one of those things of where isn't aren't the glasses supposed to help with that? Like, am I like missing something here? Is this something where it's a subtle inferring that she was close to tears at points before this? And this is like her way to let those tears out. Oh, okay. And it was like a, I can't let Iroha see this, so drop, drop. Okay, there goes my tears. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Yeah, I... I but it was, where, it was yeah. why I thought about the idea of her hiding emotions. Well, okay, as far as, um, it, instead of um, maybe what was the deal with the eye drops? Because I feel like the eye drops could be a lot more straightforward. You know, yeah, like it, it probably is. Like, I, I've never really used eye drops, so so I, I don't know why someone necessarily would use them. I, I'm not as familiar with that. I, I've used eye drops once and never used them again. It yeah. was basically just a thing because my eyes were... It was like an infection of some kind. And it oh, helped. yeah, yeah, some sort of, like, medicine or something. Yeah, it basically helped keep them lubricated, you know, or sure. whatever. But what I'm more curious about I is mean, why Yukino would cry. And I think the reason why she would cry in that situation is because it's an acknowledgement that um, that things are going to change. Mm -hmm. uh, Yui's thing was that she wants it all, right? Mm -hmm. And that that's what she was going for. Now, when push came to shove, she got cold feet, right? Mm -hmm. In Yukino's case, one of the things that she also said that definitely had a double entendre is... I hate to lose. Yeah. You know, I'm, I am I plan to win. Yep. Right? Yep. Mm hmm Regardless of how uh. this competition goes, the whole idea of, of you know, whatever the, you know, I can I get the loser to do one thing, you know, um, I don't think it would ever be something like choose me or something like that, but it would, pro uh. but it would probably be the thing of, okay, now let's have an actual open talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, let's let's actually say what's going on here, right? Right. And that is something that I believe could make Yukino cry. Because sure. that okay. is a point where things end. Mm -hmm. Something new begins, but the previous thing dies. It does. And... Because she's not, she's <laughs> That'd be so because exciting, she has no. the different the different like a, approach to this than Yui and things like that, and that's why things seem to be going better and stuff. Mm -hmm. What is she going to lose? Yeah, right. And there is the possibility she doesn't necessarily have to be thinking about Yui and things like that because I we haven't really seen her um, uh, give much thought to Yui's well, we don't, potential feelings. We don't feelings. really get her internal thought Right, process. we don't we don't get her internal thoughts that much. No. Um, Which is another <laughs> more proof thing that she's... Uh-huh. End, end game. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It, eh, yeah, it, it can go either way, but yeah, in this case, I think so, yeah. But, um... Uh, but she would certainly know that things are going to be different, mm -hmm. right? However this goes. However this goes. And that is... Yeah. Even if it's even if it was purely a happy thing, that's still something to cry over. I think. Mm, sure. You know. So. Yeah. I I am I am really happy for Iroha on this one note though. Mm. There are a lot of people fighting really hard for some things that she really wants. The difference is is that she's not going to get the one main thing that she wants out of this. But, yeah. but out yeah. of this, and this mm -hmm. is something that I think that is really, really cool, is she's going to end up with a lot of genuine friends and connections here. Sure. And it's no longer going to be... Like, she was pretty popular and stuff oh, yeah, before, yeah. but she was also kind of terrifying to a lot of the other people. Well, right. The, there, were the, um, there were the people that she let herself be terrifying to, mm -hmm. and then the people where she kind of kept up that... Fake appearance. Fake appearance. You know, and right. and she and she talked about that that side of things with yeah. Tahachiman of the yeah. of the no 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 girls don't change their minds about things that they decide for themselves, but they do change their minds about things that other people decide. Mm -hmm. Then they can just act dumb or whatever. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Oh, like, like my dozens of confessions oh. to you, where where oh. literally the the last one in this episode was just can you can you wait for a better time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and love the addendums that are added on to the mm -hmm. are you 
uh, you know, propositioning me or you, uh, hitting on me or you, whatever in mm-hmm. me. And then, you know, but blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. And Hachiman, of course, then kind brushes of... Brushes it all off. Brushes it all off. Yeah. Well, because, well, in a lot of ways, she's continuing to use it as a framework for a joke. So it's mm-hmm. going to take... If uh, you want something genuine. Yeah, it's going to take something... Ge- exactly. It's going to take something blunt and genuine, which... I, like, I, like tears that don't stop, for instance. Yeah, or or in in a in a couple other ways, just like a really just matter of fact conversation, because mm-hmm. you want him to take responsibility, Iroha, and I like that you yeah. use those words. And there, yet she doesn't say you, what she wants him to take responsibility yeah, for, even to herself. You, yeah, exactly. You don't necessarily even fully grasp what you want to take responsibility for, but you also don't take responsibility necessarily entirely for your part in the sure uh um uh in the sharing of things here. Right. It's it's the thing of um Iroha's situation I feel like is very similar to Yui's in that it's the hmm. it's the feelings Kinda that similar. that are that are obvious but technically go unsaid, yep. you know? Yep. And then because because they're they're scared and you know and all sorts of things. Yep. In Yui's case, at the very least, though, she acknowledges to herself that she has these feelings. Yes. Iroha, what we saw here is that you aren't even able to do that. Mm. Because, whoa, like, it's it's whoa. the thing where she's deceiving herself, Ooh. right? She's not just playing dumb. She's actually, she, her her equivalent would be, I'm going to become dumb so that that way it doesn't... Pr- it doesn't, doesn't become a problem, me. right? You know, it's, oh. it's not that I pretend that I, oh. that I don't actually... Like Hachiman, for instance, but I'm going to keep that up with myself. Wait, 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 wait. Is she fighting herself right here specifically with regards to how willing she is to get hurt? Because if she wants him to I take so. responsibility here. It's also a version of her basically saying saying, I want to take my I want to take action, I want to take responsibility mm-hmm. for my part as well. But if I do that, then I'll end up being put into a position where I will knowingly get right. rejected, or at the very least well, I might lose something because here. when it comes right down to it, I've never wanted something genuine. I know right, that right. I know that Yui said that, That's but you Yui's know, but the, line, but the, 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 the parallels but between the two are very, really very well. strong. Oh, <sighs> yeah. Well, okay, y'all. Thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. It's an amazing episode. Excellent. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, though, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get an early access there. You can watch full length timer reactions there, and all this comes with Discord access, so you can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general, and also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. We stream every weekday. The info's in the description. Yeah, so if ain't that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.